looks good from here. Welcome everybody to the Tuesday evening screencast video coaching call. My name is Lon Naylor. I'll be your host tonight. Hope everybody's doing well. Connie posted in the Facebook group and she's hard at work. She's the hardest working girl in showbiz and she's creating a training course, right? Very typical kind of scenario, something we all like to do and uh, she's kind of following some of the processes and things like that, recording your script in Audacity and screen captures in Camtasia and syncing all that together once you get it into a project. Oh my God, it's so tedious, right? And maybe some of you folks can relate to such a thing. So basically your question is, does anyone have any tips? Uh, watched a bunch of the tutorials and stuff, of course, and was just looking for some practical advice and encouragement. Like I say, this was posted in the Facebook group, and I know there have been a few responses there that were pretty darn good. I think what I will do here is maybe just expand on those ideas a little bit. I'll add some more in the thread discussion, of course, but I do want to make just a few kind of quick points about creating something like a training product project, right? So first up is if it's tedious, right, and we want to make things quicker and easier and faster, the very first thing I'll point out is in general that planning is kind of key. If you don't really know what you're going to show or what you're going to do, then things get messy in a hurry. <laughs> And it, the basic rule of thumb is that, it, depending upon the circumstances, of course, for every minute you spend planning, you can save like two minutes in editing. So part of that involves, of course, a script. And a lot of people don't like to write a script. And maybe they don't want to read it verbatim or whatnot. But here's the thing is that, we've said this many times before, a script keeps you on point. It keeps you from wandering around. It lets you review it so you make sure you don't miss anything. And you can craft a flow that makes sense, right? It, one of the biggest problems is, you know, if people start just creating videos off the cuff and on the fly, then they start to ramble or it gets boring or tedious to watch. <laughs> if you think creating it is tedious, well, watching one that's not pretty decently planned out is equally tedious. Oh. Right? You don't have to write a script for every kind of video. So when I say a script, I mean one that is an important video, a sales or squeeze page video, a training course. If you're going to sell this thing, it's got to rock. It's got to be solid. It's got to be tight. It's got to be punchy. And when it is tight and punchy, Another interesting thing that happens is people perceive you as being more authoritative. It's something called the fluency heuristic, and I've talked about this before. The better you speak, the more fluidly, the less ums and ahs and blah, 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 and all that rambling stuff we talked about, the less of that you do, the smarter people think you are. And that's just a, a psychological little tidbit there. So planning, of course, is something that's uh, really helpful in moving into the recording and editing phase. Okay, And so I've got a couple of extra questions here for you, Connie. First of all, I assume that you've been working on this for a while. You said you were hip deep into it. Uh, if you've created a video, are you happy with the current final result? right? So, yeah, oh man, I worked really hard on this and it was tedious, but at the end of the day, when I got done, as a result of all that editing tedium, was it a finished product that you were happy with? In other words, was all the stuff that you had to go through to get there, was all that stuff worth it? And if it was, then it's kind of a matter of trying to refine the processes okay, that resulted in you being happy with what you ended up with. Okay? And quite frankly, you mentioned that you spent hours on a 10-minute video. 
I got to tell you, to get a high quality product, an end result of a 10 minute video, hours is not bad. If you measured your editing time in hours and not days or weeks, then you're probably on the right track, even though it seems tedious. But that being said, what we would want to do at that point is to, as you're working, I would take some notes. What specifically seemed to slow you down, right, or felt awkward? Was it, you know, a process of extending frames, or was it that I kept making these mistakes when I was recording? Okay, and what you'll find is that if you address those items and incorporate that back into your planning process, so it's kind of a cycle, then what you'll find is that things start to get smoother and better in a hurry. So I guess you could call it kind of experience, right? So that's kind of the scoop. Identify what it is that you seem to run into and make a note of it very specifically and see what you can do to improve that. All right. Now, her course, I asked the question, it includes a couple different kinds of content, screen capture and PowerPoint. So for me, the way I get the best results is that I actually use two different processes for this kind of a thing. For screen capture, just my quick notes on this are rehearsal helps, right? And she is, in her case, demonstrating or teaching how to use PowerPoint for a certain audience. Okay, so in even crafting your script and putting your content together so that it flows well, once you kind of get that down and figured out what you're going to do, becoming a subject matter expert on your presentation itself is supremely helpful in the sense that if you want to cut down the amount of editing time you have to do, a lot of times that boils down to a matter of mistakes. And it's just like, you know, you wouldn't go up on stage live in front of a large group and just start winging it, right? You would be dead to rights prepared. And another little note there is when you get set up to capture, a lot of times after you're rehearsing, what's going to happen? Well, your demo is going to be like all hosed up. It's going to be all modified and stuff like that while you work out what it is you're going to show. So I would also, in my rehearsing, take a little bit of time and, and just figure out, okay, I, this is how I reset my demo. Okay, I need to delete this stuff that I put on the screen and you know get back to square one. Your demo is, is a scene, and your starting scene, right, before you do stuff, is where you want to start, and you want to start there consistently. So that's just a little tip. The way I do this is I have my script open and the app that I'm going to be training on open at the same time. I record live by reading the script, and I do it very slowly and deliberately. Okay, so I'm reading my script, and as I read my script, I'm performing the actions. And again, I do this rather slowly. If I make a mistake, don't, I don't stop. I might hit the pause key on my Camtasia recorder, get my stuff together, maybe even have to reset the demo scene, and then I just continue, okay, until I get a good take. And that's just kind of my process. I'll give you a couple of other tips here. The way that really works out well is if I can have my script open on one screen and that which I am recording and demoing on another screen. I don't know if you have dual monitors, but dual monitors, if, if you do this kind of thing, just oh, the best, the best thing ever and the, probably one of the best hardware investments you could possibly make, right? So once all that's kind of done and recorded, I have my audio, right? Because I read it from my script as I captured my screen capture. 
right? I don't necessarily record my audio separately because it, it's just, and, and this varies from person to person, it's just kind of a bear to try to sync things up, right? So if I'm talking as I'm saying screen capture, you know, and I'm pointing it out, then that's already captured. And guess what? I don't have to sync that up anywhere, right? And if I make a mistake and I go screen, que <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I stop, pause, screen, capture, something like that. And at the end of the day, what happens is cutting stuff out, stupid simple and wicked quick. Trying to synchronize stuff after the fact, and again, this varies. Some people love to do it that way. It's just my experience and my preferential way to do it. For the PowerPoint content, it's basically a different process. <laughs> and what I've done is I do have a, a video. So this is my current process for recording PowerPoint content, you know, my slide content. And I'll put this link in the chat box. But I guess the punchline there is that, for me, it's kind of two different processes, right? So that kind of helps me out a bit. And then a few other thoughts. One thing that can really slow you down is if you don't stay organized. So as you can, maybe you've even run into, as you can imagine, when you start to create a bunch of stuff, right, different clips, especially if you've got your screen capture stuff and your PowerPoint stuff. If you don't kind of come up with a naming convention for your files, and I like to kind of number stuff in order, so maybe one dash agenda or two dash process one as kind of my content, and then also put it into project directories. And I also have a tutorial um, kind of a cool little trick that I use to create a directory structure that keeps me organized. So let's put that in the chat box. All right, so staying organized will help you keep you from losing your mind and keep it simple. A lot of people, you know, they try to do way too much. A lot of superfluous animations and, oh gosh, you know, it, it just is more distracting than anything else, especially if you're creating a training course, that kind of thing. Don't try to do too much. And then finally, in if you're using Camtasia 2020, one thing you might take a look at doing is, again, if you have one that you've completed, save it as a different name, and then go in and create a template from it after you have maybe converted some of your content into placeholders. So maybe you start off with a few slides and then you have screen capture content. Well, you can convert those in an existing project to placeholders. You just right click on the clip on the timeline and say convert to placeholder. The thing I like about that is any effects or configuration that you've added to the clip, let's say a screen capture video. Most of the time I will make my cursor bigger. I will add, you know, some cursor effects like left click rings, right click rings, so my cursor, you know, is easy to see and my actions are clicking actions are easy to see. Well, if I've done that in the screen capture of my project and I create that clip to a placeholder, then when I drop in the screen capture for my next chapter or my next project, the placeholder applies all those effects to the screen capture, right? So, and then things like presets and favorites can also kind of save you some time there, all right? So, hopefully that uh, helped out a little bit there, Connie. That's a great question, and I just wanted to give a few of my initial thoughts on there. Hey, Lon Naylor here. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions and comments below. I answer all of them personally. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.